I know three monitors is a lot. I wish there was like one more monitor. <laughs> We're up. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Cool. yeah. Well, well, unbeknownst to Dusty and I, we are live right now. So, <laughs> welcome to another installment of Kendrick and Dusty Talk Sports. Fun day this, uh, today. Not a whole lot of sports news, but uh, but enough out there. And, you know, hearing from Cal Kirk for the first time in a long time. I actually uh, ran into him last year. He was participating in the charity kickball, Jack Harlow's uh, charity kickball tournament last year out of Jim Patterson Stadium. It was great to see him there, and it's great to see him returning to Freedom Hall here in a few weeks. It's going to be pretty sweet to, you know, for people like myself that didn't grow up in Louisville to see the impact that obviously he made previously and, and to kind of bring that back. And I know it's going to be nostalgic for a lot of Louisville fans, especially <laughs> that's going to be really special. And then of course, when you look at the sports world as a whole right now, mm-hmm. as we kind of talked about yesterday, while it seems like we're kind of in somewhat of a stagnant mode, it, it, there's still plenty of building blocks and uh, pieces that are going left and right, right here. We kind of have some breaking news in the NBA as well, too. That's right. Uh, former card Montrez Harrell is re-signing with the Philadelphia 76. Sixers. I was a little bit surprised by that because didn't play much towards the end of the season. I don't think he played too much in the playoffs for the Sixers, but he's resigning. It's good to see Trez uh, signing on with another NBA team. And when you look at just simply at this moment right now, an NBA free agency, I mean, it's taken off very quickly, of course, and it's just another local tie, obviously, that's already checked off the list. And uh, we just saw a week ago, I mean, you have Russell that goes off the list back to the Lakers right. as well. And of course, I don't know if you want to call him a local guy, obviously, but uh, how about an attendee of his camp? You had OB top and now headed up north. He's going to be kind of somewhat of a local headed to Indiana. So uh, it's just another one of those blocks that falls as well. But uh, when you look at what is happening specifically today and tonight, it's a pretty big matchup for a team that could quite frankly use some help in their roster depth. Yeah. Racing, they take on Kansas City tonight in about an hour and 10 minutes from right now. Of course, if you're watching this later, then, you know, it is what it is. But <laughs> we're breaking the timeline. <laughs> but but Racing is taking on uh, taking on Kansas City tonight. And both teams will come in here a little bit shorthanded because they have so many players playing in the World Cup. But for Racing, they have six players, including their breakout star, Savannah DeMello, all are on their way with the are underway practicing with their international teams preparing for the World Cup. Also, Amina Ekic is playing in friendlies for Bosnia later this month, opening the door for some new faces to see major time on the pitch. Of course, so of course we miss uh, good players, but but also it's it's fun to give uh, the chance to, to some other players. So it's uh, it's a little bit win and lose. Yeah, it's definitely an opportunity, and I think it takes some of the pressure off because in the beginning of the year I was like stressing like oh if I get minutes I'm gonna have to play really well now it's just like I'm playing really well for my team and Dusty as you and I just talked about last night tonight also marks the return of Nadia Nadim after a season ending injury last season that match against Kansas City kicks off at eight o'clock at Lynn Family State it's gonna be exciting to watch this match but I think it's also intriguing you kind of mentioned just the missing pieces that we've had uh, that we've seen from Racing Louisville, they're going to have to kind of bring it together. Their most recent match, uh, we kind of heard from some of the players, there was some frustration just simply because of not being able to play all 90 minutes and hold their lead. They had a 2-0 lead, and then they allowed goals late in the ball game, uh, 82nd minute and the 87th, I believe, as well. Um, that's just not the way you want to close out ball games. So having some help with Nadia is going to be huge. Uh, intrigued to see what happens tonight against a team that they've had some pretty decent success against as well. And, you know, racing, that was one of their problems last year was closing out. They they play well for about 75, 80 minutes, but there's always a stretch in there where they, they kind of kind of fumble the bag and they don't cl- happen in closing out. They've been doing a better job of that this year. Hopefully that was just a, just a little snag and they re- get, get back to their previous form from this season. It's hard to also talk about just how difficult it is to take a key player away. Seeing Savannah DeMello out of the lineup is definitely difficult. Uh, but yes, they will be very happy to welcome Nadim back. And uh, we're excited to see her play. She's a 17-year vet. And uh, we'll see her back in action after she's been out for 10 
months. That was thanks to an ACL injury. Those things are the worst. And that happened in September of this right. past year. So, and that was in Portland. So we're, we're excited to see her back out on the pitch. <laughs> on the pitch. Well, going back to the you know, news we found out yesterday, but we got to talk to Cal Keurig this afternoon. Well, this morning, he is returning to uh, uh, Freedom Hall in the TBT tournament. Cal Keurig, I was happened to be there in that last game in Freedom Hall. Just a sophomore who played, he played but kind of sparingly as a freshman sophomore. He was actually a walk-on. And he just exploded for 22 points in the second half against the number one team in the country. And a game that U of L had to have. They had to win that game to make the NCAA tournament that year. And actually going back and watching those old stories and see Rick Pitino talking about, yeah, we're going to celebrate making the tournament. And, but that was a magical day, and we may, we're going to see some of those magic moments again here in a couple weeks. The last time Cal Keurig or anybody in a U of L uniform played in Freedom Hall, it was magical. To go back into that building, especially the way that uh, it all ended there, is going to be something special. It's going to be a lot of fun for us. As a sophomore, Keurig scored 22 points as U of L knocked off then number one Syracuse in their final game at the iconic facility. It's an unbelievable moment. It's something that, like you said, every kid dreams of, and it was a great opportunity and took advantage of it. Since graduating in 2012, Keurig has continued playing professionally overseas. However, he was forced to undergo brain surgery to remove a tumor in 2015. He beat that and returned to the court in 2017 and continues to play. He says reuniting with some of the guys he made a Final Four run with in his senior season will be exciting. You know, I played with Peyton for for three years, and I played with Russ and, and Rakim and all those guys, and uh, I played against Peyton overseas and when he was in Europe, uh, but I haven't played with Russ or Rakim since Louisville, so uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And from the sound of it, Cal isn't the most excited person in his household to see him play in Freedom Hall. One of my sons watched the Freedom Hall game, you know, almost every day when he was uh, a couple years ago. And uh, so it's going to be exciting for him to see that atmosphere and, and to be part of that experience. And how cool would that be for his son to see him playing in Freedom Hall, be around that atmosphere? The place is going to be electric. And I'm going to say, like I said, that, that was when you, people ask me my all time favorite events to cover, that's right up there in the top 10, top five, because there was 20,000 people in an arena that really only sat 19. <laughs> and I'm sure it's probably about 50,000 people to say they were at the game. But, but the, the, to be in that atmosphere, it was the loudest I've ever heard Freedom Hall. And it was it was it was one of those things I'll never forget. What a great way to close out the time of Freedom Hall, too. I mean, there are scripts that you can't write. Right. This is one. And of course, obviously, the story behind just what he's had to deal with as well. And mm -hmm. uh, to get back out on the court. Right. I mean, what a great opportunity that will be. I, I expect a lot of people to be back out there, and uh, whether they're fans already of Kyler or going to be fans, mm -hmm. um, add me to the list right there. I mean, that, that's going to be awesome to watch, and, and to be able to you know, kind of relive the life of and, and kind of breathe new air into Freedom Hall is going to be very special. Right, and he hasn't played here in a decade since he graduated in 2012. He was on that 2012 team that made the magical run in the Final Four to, with the infrared uniforms. Of course, they lost to Kentucky in the national semifinal in New Orleans, in which one of my memories of that was the giant rat that was in the media room the whole time in the Superdome. But it was one of. But he had one of those careers that you, that it, it, I mean, it's you don't want to call him Rudy because he was talented. <laughs> and Cal could play. Cal was like a glorified walk-on because he was a walk-on because of other re other reasons, but basically because his family had money. Yeah. So <laughs> Rick Pitino kind of worked the system. He's like, okay, I got this good player. I can get another player with a, on a scholarship. So that's kind of how that worked out. But he was always been great. He he had his Cal's Corner charity that he was doing immediately after he graduated from U of L. So he's always been a part of the uh, of the community, even when he wasn't here. And so to have him back and have him playing again at Freedom Hall with Russ Smith and Peyton Siva and Raheem Buckles is another uh, fan favorite when he was at U of L. It'll be it'll be great to see. Uh, there's a, there's something I call the chill factor, and it's you know the number of chills that you get, if you will, on your arms. And so sometimes you know you go into a room and uh, it's exciting, and other times you walk in and you just get chills 
and you feel it across your body. Is that going to be a 10 out of 10 chill factor game when you go back out there? That, that first game will be, especially when they introduce them, because, you know, the crowd's going to go crazy. And like I said, tickets are still on sale for that thing. So get out there because, I mean, for U of L fans, even if you're just a fan of basketball, that TBT tournament, it's fun to watch because, I mean, it's, it's a bunch of uh, former players playing mostly for the most part for their, uh, their former schools. And you have a couple of players like Chris Dow who didn't play at U of L, but he's, he played high school around here, played at Bellamy. Um, it would be great to see them out there, and they're paying for a million dollars. And <laughs> nothing on the line at all. We wouldn't love to have that. Right. And it's all or nothing. Yeah. There's not like a second prize. Right. Yeah, so they're playing for a million. So, like, they're going to be playing like it's the NBA championship every night. And so there's, there's not going to be any nights off for these players. The pride, too, of having your university involved in it, I, right. I think that's also very that's cool. And, and yeah. I mean, you know, you get the university behind you, and it kind of brings back the good memories of what once mm -hmm. was and what kind of still is in a way. And it's kind of sad because, like, Syracuse has a team, too. It would be awesome oh. if they would if oh. they were in the same bracket, but they're not. But if, but, cool. uh, but a rematch? Speak it into existence, that would, that, my man. That would be awesome. <laughs> that would be awesome. Awesome. So cool. And while we're talking about, of course, athletes that have seen most of their primes, I would say it's pretty safe to say <laughs> that pretty safe to say. Uh, they're going to have an opportunity, of course, to make a million dollars. That's pretty special. But there are some athletes out there right now in Louisville playing at the fairgrounds. <laughs> and, and, and they are trying to make a statement now to be able to find that university they'll be playing for in the near future. And how about the best in the entire country? being right here in Louisville. We are talking about none other than Jazzy Davidson. Our, yeah, Jazzy Davidson, who, by the way, is absolutely spectacular to watch. Uh, physically imposing. She can obviously take the ball up and down the court and is inside the paint, just absolutely lethal. Watching her succeed has been something incredibly special here in Louisville. And specifically, you know, she's pretty young here, Kendrick. Oh, yeah, she, she's in the class of 2025. She's the number one player in that class. Of course, the number two player in that class is Zakaya Johnson out at Sacred Heart. Um, their games are kind of similar. Zakaya is a little bit more physical than she is from what I saw yesterday, but she can play. I mean, she's got a great man. She's got a great personality. She's a great interview. And I say she's got length. She's got long arms, and she, she can handle the ball. She can get inside. We didn't see us take too many jumpers yesterday, but she didn't really need to. They were beating that team by like 100 yesterday. And so she, she's – the or she's an Oregon native. They're super proud of her up there. And, you know, we had a chance to ask her about, of course, U of L. My game is very versatile, and that's something that can really help any team at the next level. It's been really busy recently, especially now that coaches can talk, contact me, but it's been super fun getting to know all these schools. And I know my teammates got my back, and if you shut me down, there's like what, seven other people that are just as skilled. Now we can also confirm, Kendrick, that she has been in conversations with the University of Louisville. However, uh, she hasn't actually been on the campus right. yet by any means. But I have a feeling that'll change. That may, <laughs> there's a chance. <laughs> I, I don't think Walls is sitting there not knowing right now that this this potential superstar is right down the road. So should be pretty interesting. I, I like the fact that she believes that there's talent around her too, that can kind of compliment her. I think that's a really big statement about her. Um, and uh, how about this high school that she goes to? Uh, Clackamas. Clackamas. The Clackamas Cavaliers. Uh, so the Cavaliers trying to find a way now to find really the university of her future. She's also so young though. She's class of 2025, a five-star recruit. ESPN has her as the number one overall prospect, as you mentioned. Uh, and she's also, by the way, the highest ranked prospect ever out of the state of Oregon. So needless to say, really a spectacle to watch. If you're in Louisville, what an opportunity to be able to see her. Right. I've got a feeling just just looking at my crystal ball. I don't know anything. She's probably going to be an Oregon duck. Oregon's got a very good women's basketball program. She's born and raised in Oregon. You, you, you've got to land that play. <laughs> the success that they've had to recently right there, especially, I mean, you, you go down the line of athletes that have gone through the UFO, uh, and then, of course, you add the Nike partnership. It, it's hard to beat that. Um, maybe maybe UFO steps up. I mean, somehow. they very well could. I mean, they, they've obviously had more success on the floor with the Final Four runs. I don't think Oregon has made a Final Four run, but – you know, but you know, Jeff Jeff Wallace, if if the power of persuasion can, <laughs> I mean, he did. He's plucked players out of the Northwest before with Shoney Schemmel, 
And then look at Haley Van Lith. Those are all players that came from the Northwest that say he's had success up there. All he has to do is show her the slide that he can take down to the court. I think, uh, you know, organizing. <laughs> he's so proud of himself. <laughs> that, that slide is, if you haven't seen it before, Walls has a special slide that goes directly to the practice courts. And uh, it yeah, is from up, from upstairs at his office. It's pretty dang cool. And, and it's very Jeff Walls. <laughs> it's, it's not, I don't think the Oregon Ducks have that, right? They might. Because when, when I've talked like, talk to the other the players on the team, they're like, you know, he's been wanting it for years. It wasn't a, a whim. And you know, they said that, you know, those other teams that have. This we'll pretend. Slide. We'll pretend for our sake. The, the magic of slide. They just have everything else. Right. You know? <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Well, when you look also at successful athletes that have made it to the next level, Devontae Parker is an easy one to talk about mm-hmm. simply because going from the UofL, he gets picked in the 2015 draft. And so naturally he comes back home frequently Mm -hmm. and he's bringing on his camp once again and that's happening quickly and in the season of course of camps that is happening tomorrow it's going to be slightly a hot day but uh this is nothing new for Devontae Parker uh Devontae Parker now with the Patriots of course he was drafted by the Miami Dolphins last year was his first year with New England I think he just resigned with the Patriots yeah yeah you're 30 age 30 I believe is what he is right now and uh but of course He's got the alma mater that is dating back to Ballard High School, and that's where this camp will be taking place. And then he's, of course, a U of L alma mater as well. And uh, Kendrick, you've talked to Devonte several times. Yes, he seems like a pretty casual, chill individual. He's very casual, very chill, and he—if you want great answers from him, you ask him about SpongeBob SquarePants. That is noted. That is, <laughs> what, 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 is, what does he talk about with SpongeBob? He loves SpongeBob. It's Who like doesn't? His, that, right? It's his right. like it's his favorite TV show. Really? I, le- at least last time I talked to him, it was. Really? I don't know if that's changed, but I actually have done a whole story on him and his love for SpongeBob SquarePants. No kidding. Yes. Just... And the fun, other the funny thing about Devante is like when you talk to him, he's like he said he's kind of quiet, kind of low key. If you go out there on the field and you just watch him. Nobody talks more trash <laughs> than Devontae Parker really? all game long. Yeah. Devontae's a great guy. He's another one. He's he's given back from day one from the time that he graduated from UofL and has been in the NFL. He's come back every year. He's put on his camp. It's good to see he's back at his alma mater because he's had to kind of bounce around. He's had it at Seneca, Seneca High School a couple times. So it's good to see him have it at his alma mater. And you talk about a high school player. That was amazing to watch. I mean, there's we have video of him where they he lines up and there's literally three people around him and he still makes a catch. <laughs> he still probably scores and he could he could jump over he could jump over people. It was funny because he was a great basketball player too. Yeah. He could jump out of the gym except on his jump shot where you could slide a credit card under his. <laughs> but he can make the he can make the three. He was a good basketball player. Saving his ACL. That's what he was doing. Right there. <laughs> yeah. That's that's Is that what it was? You jumped so high you tore your ACL. I have so much. I never knew you had Daryl Griffith. <laughs> <laughs> I have that you will never ever be able to see in your life. So, yeah. No, that's uh, that's awesome that he's putting this. On and, and the details that we have um, from this camp as well. So it starts at 11 a.m. And as I mentioned, it is on Saturday as well. Um, and uh, it will be at Ballard High School. So it should be exciting to see Devontae back at his alma mater and working with high school kids as well. And actually, youth, youth uh, I should correct myself on that. Um, should be exciting to see that outside of that. Um, that camp is always fun. To, I've been, like I said, I've covered a couple of times. I mean, they really do. They really do teach the kids. It's not, and he's out there and he's with the kids. It's like you said, this video right here, he's out there. He's not just like, he just shows up and just kind of walks around. Now he's actually out there and encouraging the kids. So he, he puts on a good camp. It's camp season. And uh, naturally the Louisville's best, they are showing up. Now, speaking of Louisville's best, how about a figure that maybe hasn't been in Louisville all that long, but we're going to say like claim. 10 minutes. Yeah, but we're we'll claim him. Claim him. <laughs> uh, all of a sudden, we can say we have a superstar on the baseball diamond and now an actor almost. <laughs> an actor. Kendrick, take a look at this. This is the Instagram post today from Ellie De La Cruz. Ellie, of course, has been in the MLB for a very short period of time. He was with the Bats earlier this year, and he's calling himself Ellie De La Tom Cruise. <laughs> of he's, course he is. It's, it's, it, I mean, where is he getting this from? Is he getting help from social media, or is he just coming up with this himself? I, I want to know. But either way, he's been a sensation from his time in Louisville to, of course, now in Cincinnati. But he is also starring in a commercial for Mission Impossible. In fact, the post on Instagram, he says, and I quote, call me Ellie De La Tom Cruise. And he added Tom Cruise in this. 
See hashtag Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1, only in theaters July 22nd. So Ellie is already in a commercial, Kendrick. I would love to see the two of them stand next to each other. <laughs> Because it's just Tom Cruise was like Ellie's child. It's like the first thing that came to my mind. <laughs> Ellie probably was 12 years old at the height that Tom Cruise is. Uh, Ellie viral. probably wasn't even born. Uh, it's at <laughs> the height. But think about like if Ellie was 12 or 13, based off the height he is now, he had to have been at least five, seven, five. He eight. was already taller than Tom Cruise. I mean, he really was. Like, Tom, <laughs> so it's like, kind of amazing. <laughs> so like now, uh, Tom Cruise is old enough to be his grandfather, yeah. but Ellie would look like. Tom Cruise is dead. Now we need a uh, an Ellie De La Cruz Top Gun. Now, as we saw from uh, Brom, if, Ellie, other, if uh, Ellie De La Cruz can get in the cockpit of a jet, now that's something. I, I, <laughs> I would not. I mean, he's apparently the fastest man in baseball, and he claims he's one of the fastest in the world. So if, if he can go to a, a jet, yeah, naturally, <laughs> I think that it would work out. But Ellie, of course, has been incredibly successful. So have the Cincinnati Reds. They start a huge series this evening mm-hmm. with the Milwaukee Brewers. The Reds with a two-game lead at this time. But – of course, a three-game stretch against the Brewers right before the All-Star break. Mm-hmm. This is statement time right now because imagine if they can even get two of the three. Right. All of a sudden, you have a three-game lead with a team that didn't expect to be here. No. And going to the All-Star break, I mean, the Reds are going to be gearing up maybe to make some moves at the deadline. Right, yeah. They're actually going to be spenders this time. Well, we, we hope. We hope. And they, um, But I think it's, if you're the Reds – I don't think you necessarily have to win the series, but at least you have to get one. So at least it's at least a tie. You don't, you don't, you, de- you just want to avoid the sweep more than anything. Of course, you want to sweep them, but more than anything, you just want to avoid the sweep so you can at least go into the All Star break with the tie. Should be exciting to see. It's a great point too. Reds well, going into the All Star break with a first place lead. I don't think anybody, even Reds fans, came out thinking that was possible. And so should be exciting to watch the stretch here before hopefully for Reds fans. They get pitching at the deadline. Let's let's not forget, by the way, today is July the 7th. So we are only a few weeks away from the deadline on the 31st, which is, of course, when the Reds will have to make moves. Addressing a rotation that has been kind of weak at the moment, that's really their only glaring weakness. But L.A. De La Cruz and the squad, they're, they're gearing up this week. The, the Mets look like they'll be a fire sale at that they time. They could so be. So they may be able to get some pitching out of there. That would be <laughs> You know, there is one thing, Kendrick, before we leave y'all, I was listening to MLB Network Radio on the way here, and and it was an interesting talk and discussion that they had because Shohei Otani, you're hearing his name left and right. Right. And a lot of people thinking that, you know, teams that don't necessarily pony up money like the Reds, (laughs) they're they're just not in the discussion. Well, that's not true because Shohei Otani doesn't need to be signed right now. Right, exactly. He'll he'll be a rental, right? And so – A team like the Rays, a team like I would even throw out there to a degree, the Brewers, even though they don't necessarily have the minor league pieces, but mostly a team like the Reds could be more involved than people realize. And I'll tell you this, the U I mean, the DH spot at the moment, Votto has had that. He can easily play first base, move steer the outfield. Otani's got a spot. Like you're going to (laughs) make a spot for Otani. You know, the pitch every, every fourth day. day. I mean, and, and when you have him come out, I mean, you talk about the return. Look at the guys that we have right here in Louisville. They right. have some faces. They've got the minor league pieces to maybe put together a deal. They really. I do. just wonder if the Angels are going to play ball because how, how are you? Because how do you live with your legacy as I'm the guy that traded away the modern day Babe Ruth? It, they, they do that, <laughs> and on top of that, they ruin the entire career of Mike Trout. Now this is this is neither there or that, but yeah, it's yeah. the Angels have been kind of a mess of an organization. The Reds trying though to make moves in some way, shape, or form. I like the Mets comparison. You have to hope the Mets kind of don't take the momentum they've had over the weekend or over the week against the Diamondbacks. If they can find a way to kind of stay in that bottom tier of the NL East, yeah, you might see a Verlander on the move. But can you imagine Justin Verlander in Cincinnati? That would be awesome. That would be, be so, so awesome. We'll be there. We will be there if that happens. So. <laughs> we hope. But we'll, we, we, we hope. Uh, but either way, it should be exciting to watch the series. And Dele de la Cruz, he'll be an actor on the side. <laughs> all, right. all right well another another fun episode 
um, I'm, I'm, of course, I'm going on vacation after tonight. Yes, you, you are. will have highlights of racing tonight yes, at, on Wave News at 11, and you'll hold it down while I'm gone. And hold it down. The, the two of us will return together on Monday. Was that July the 17th? I believe. I believe so. so. Kendrick's going to be uh, enjoying his vacation. Plenty, yes, so, yes, yes, yeah. I will. I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited for you. You deserve it, my man. Right. Kendrick puts a lot of work in that none of y'all even get the chance to see. <laughs> We're very thankful for him. But either way, as you mentioned, Racing Louisville this evening. We will have that action on Wave News at 11 o'clock. Also, if you have any questions for us, you can comment right here. If you're watching on Facebook, on Twitch, on YouTube, on Twitter, please comment. Matter of fact, shout out Raymond Raymond. He said, interesting. Thank you, Raymond. It, 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 <laughs> we, hope, we hope we are. We really hope. Uh, yes. You. Yeah. If you have any questions out there, including you, Raymond, uh, for us that you'd like us or any discussions that you may want to see us have or talk about here, uh, let us know. And also, while you're at it, press the follow button on Twitter. No, we're not on threads, at least yet. Yeah. <laughs> That's the key. <laughs> but we are on Twitter, and it's at Wave News Sports. I repeat, Wave News Sports. Follow us there. And outside of that, we really appreciate you guys for taking the time with us once again on our, I believe this is our third. It's our third one. Our third one. Wow. Look at, so they, they taught us how to do all this stuff two days ago. Yeah. We knocked out three of them. We're, so how we're, about us? we're pros, man. Yeah. Let's go. That, that's how we started right there. <laughs> Let's go. All right. For, for Dusty Baker, I'm Kendrick Haskins, and we will see you when we see you. <laughs>